The way I see this watch is that this is a very practical diver that has a timer bezel and GMT functionality. And these are coincidentally two of my favorite complications. Tracking another time zone makes sure that I don't call my relatives in Australia in the middle of the night, they kind of don't like it very much. And having a timer bezel allows me to time pretty much anything. And having some serious challenges with time management these days, I do time a lot of things. And I mean a lot. Hello and welcome back! Initially priced at around $300 and now only a couple of months after its release can be found for much closer to $200 mark, this is a cracker of a watch. San Martin has been consistently delivering high-quality timepieces and this one is not an exception. However, there are a couple of things which are not particularly evident from the product listings or on the product pictures that I believe you need to be aware of before buying this watch. And I will of course cover them in this video. Also, I've been test driving this watch for a few days now and while this is not my first GMT on the channel and by far not the first San Martin, I am seriously considering using it as my daily, at least for the time being, and I'll show you my motivation why in a bit. And yes, all the links to the product listings of this Diver GMT will be in the description of this video for you to explore further. In terms of the design, well, I am a bit conflicted here. Ok, San Martin did put its own mark on a few components, like somewhat different hour indices and hands, for example, however, it is unmistakably a fairly strong homage. I even visited my local shop on the high street to see how close they've got. And yep pretty close. So, design is great, but let's be frank, putting this into a category of San Martin's originals will be a bit of a stretch. Having said that, after doing a bit of a deeper examination, there are a few things that San Martin did differently here and, while not obvious, I found these points of difference quite interesting and I will of course share them as we go over components of the San Martin. So, moving on, we have here very versatile and very wearable dimensions. Bezel diameter is 40.5 mm, case width is 40 mm, case height is 13.5 mm, and lock to lock distance is 47.3 mm. We have 20 mm lock width with bracelet tapered down to 18 mm at the clasp. Together with inverted end links, these are probably the most versatile proportions, which will work on pretty much most wrist sizes. I wonder what this case and proportions remind me of. Well, it will come to me eventually. And by the way, this is a small but important difference to the Longines GMT, which is about 1 mm larger pretty much in all dimensions except for the case height. And yes, even the lug width is 21 mm. Now, back to this San Martin, here is something that is not obvious from the product listings of pictures that I referred to earlier. And it is when I measured the full length of the supplied bracelet, I only got 8 inches or just a smidge over 20 centimeters, and that is with a clasp on the fly adjustment fully extended. This is perfectly fine for my about 7 inch wrist, however, if your wrist is, let's say, larger than 8 inches or even 7 and 3 quarters of an inch, I would recommend reaching out to the seller and asking for additional link or two. And we also have a pretty good weight here, 160 grams as supplied and 150 grams exactly after adjusting the bracelet to my about 7 inch wrist. And we of course have a Japanese Seiko NH34 GMT movement here, by now a well reputable and reliable so-called Kohler GMT caliber, which we see pretty much in most budget GMT watches these days. Ok, being a diver, San Martin gave us a 200 meter water resistant case, so should be enough for swimming and possibly some skin diving. San Martin delivered a full standard steel construction here with very good build quality and finishing. Most of the case surfaces feature satin like finish with subtle high polished chamfers on top of the flanks. The crown guards are somewhat reminiscent of a Rolex Submariner, well, nothing particularly wrong with that. And we have a signed screw down crown with comfortable grip. We have a sterile screw on back case, which is very much like San Martin's other watches. Should San Martin start doing anything about their back cases, like engraving or exhibition window, what do you think? Do let us know in the comments.
As for the bracelet, similar to the case, we have here a high level of refinement. The inverted N-Link's integration with the case is practically seamless. There is plenty of articulation in this H-style bracelet and it hugs the wrist really nicely. The tolerances are good and the finishing is very decent too. We have screws connecting the links, which emphasizing a high build quality of this bracelet. And by the way, this is another point of difference from the bracelet on the 3000 Longines watch, which for some reason uses friction pins to connect the links, which considered a more of a budget approach and did raise a few eyebrows. Samatan resorted here to all brushed facets, including on the sides of the links. I generally prefer this type of satin brushing. It still gives the metal a nice premium sheen and at the same time works well to hide the potential scratches. Moving on to the clasp, and we have here a well familiar by now excellent Saint Martin's fully milled clasp with on the fly adjustment, which provides good adjustment range about 1 cm and ensures that we can get a perfect fit every time. Also, this is a 20 mm clasp and therefore it feels a bit more hefty and at the same time balances out this watch on the wrist really well. Now, if you are thinking at least of one good reason to buy this watch, well, bezel could be it. It is a ceramic insert unidirectional 120 click bezel with a lunged peep at 12 o'clock, as we would expect on a diver. The engraved markers are well defined. The prominent well machined bezel grip, which initially seemed a bit too big, actually has grown on me, and these quite masculine looking grooves provide plenty of grip traction. And then the bezel action. It is very very good. There is hardly any backplay, the clicks are crisp and tactile, and the resistance is just right. It is one of those bezels that you will turn just for the sake of turning it. And here is how it sounds. The sapphire crystal on this GMT diver is also very good. The crystal is really clear and anti-reflective coating is very effective. The crystal doesn't exactly disappear, however, the legibility is very good at pretty much any viewing angle. And this dial is to some degree a reason for such a good legibility. San Martin offers this watch with three dial variations, green, blue and this black one. All three colorways meant to have a prominent sunburst effect, however, as you can see, there is hardly any sunburst on my black dial, if actually any. I'm not a big fan of sunburst dials, not on the divers anyway, so I am okay with this more piano black background. We have applied our markers, which are well filled with loom, as we will see in a moment. The logo on top of the dial and the wording around 6 o'clock marker are all printed. We have a framed date window at 3 o'clock position, printed minute track and also printed in red 24 hour markers for tracking the second time zone. The handset is well finished and well proportioned with the minute, second and the GMT hands elegantly stretching all the way to the edge of the dial. San Martin could possibly add a bit more complexity to the hands, however, I think there is plenty going on on this four-handed dial as it is, and adding more complexity will just end up making it possibly looking a bit too busy and cluttered. What do you think? Well, do let us know in the comments. I do like the subtle splashes of red on the dial and hands, which do complement the black dial background. And as I just mentioned, hands are well finished and nicely filled with loom. Talking of which, San Martin applied quite a generous amount of BGW X1 Superluminova here. The loom application is consistent, which is good, and as we can see, it still glows very well even after almost 20 minutes of recording. So, no complaints here. Right, so what is my verdict? Well, in terms of price, we have a pretty competitive price tag of around 220 dollars at the time of making this video. In terms of functionality, I think this GMT diver packs all the key functions. And in my humble opinion, it delivers a level of refinement that is well beyond its price point. And the reason I consider it as my daily is because it very much reminds me of one of my favorite San Martins. And the good news is that it does not look like Rolex. Well, kinda, but it's not exactly San Martin's fault in this case, if you know what I mean. Okay, I would possibly prefer a bit more originality, especially taking into account some very interesting and original designs that we've seen from San Martin recently. 
What are your thoughts? Well, do let us know in the comments. But if you rather want to see some and watches that do Hamash Rolex or Tudor for that matter, then click on my playlist over here. Or for all other watches, I will put a link over there. And as always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Take care and I will see you in the next video.